Welcome to one more of our occasional series, Break Out of Your Box. And uh, we, we do these videos whenever we get a chance to interview folks that we really believe carry something significant for the body of Christ. And it's my great pleasure today to be with our good friends, Roger and Robin Fields, Fields and Harvest Ministries. Welcome to the Dreams Network. Hey, it's great to be here. <laughs> this is their first video interview, so, you know, cut them some slack. <laughs> but no, we're going to have some fun. Uh, the fields have been coming up here for many years. Uh, we only recently, I guess a couple, three years ago, started to partner with them to bring their training uh, in, the, in the area of freedom ministry. And so we wanted to just uh, give them an opportunity to really let folks know in a, in a more detailed way uh, the things that God's called them to do to serve the body of Christ, to help folks get free and uh, basically just be a blessing. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your history. Um, you know, how, how long have you been doing this? What, you know, how'd you get into this sort of thing? <laughs> Somebody got an answer. <laughs> well, uh, we pastored a number of years ago, and we began to realize that a lot of people were getting saved, but that they, within six months, seemed to be back in a worse shape than what they were. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> under the teaching of the scriptures, we had always been taught, well, ask Christ to come in. He heals everything. And then he sets you free so you can move on and have the life that you want. Right. But we began to realize that that was not necessarily true. We knew, I knew that I was saved, but even in my own life, I realized that I was not free. Right. And so I began to uh, debate with the Lord over that issue. And he told me, well, the reason that you're not free is because you don't know the truth. And I go, but you're the truth. And he goes, yes, I am the truth but you don't know the truth of why you keep dealing with these old issues. Oh, okay. And so that was the beginning of the Holy Spirit begin to re, re cause me to begin to rethink and reread the word of God in a different way. Mm -hmm. Because my, my belief was, is that when we got saved, everything, when Christ came in, everything bad went out. And so all we did was just build ourselves as righteous people of God and, right. and took on the form of Christ and followed him as his disciples did. But then I discovered that that was not necessarily true. I, I spent more time on my face repenting than I did actually walking as the son of God. Right. So that was the beginning of how the Lord began to reveal to me the issues within me were, were there because I had to figure out the truth of why they were there, and I had to allow the Holy Spirit to reteach me mm -hmm. as to the truth of God. Mm -hmm. And that's true. I mean, we, you know, part of what I think we do is we <clears throat> help people realize that it is the truth that sets us free. Mm -hmm. And the truth is Jesus loves us. Yeah. That's the real truth right there. Right. And we feel like that we're honored and privileged that we, we get to partner with God. Mm -hmm. In that, you know, we have personal ministry sessions with people and we um, we just come together before the Lord at the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. And uh, and really, we just, you know, help them come closer to him right. and understand more of the truth of what he sees in them and what he thinks about them. Mm -hmm. And I really think that's the strength of what God has called us to do. And really, um, you know, the tools that he's allowed us to, you know, acquire over the years have really been beneficial. Um and, you know, just teaching people how much he loves us and how much he wants us to be free of things that have hindered us from walking in that truth. Yeah. And so sure. every tool that he's, you know, allowed us to encounter has just been, you know, a great benefit, not just to us, but to everybody else. And uh, so mm. we really are honored that we get to watch his work in people, in our brothers and sisters, and in ourselves. Sure. You know, we all experience a greater de uh, degree of freedom mm -hmm. the more we walk with Him. And right. so um, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a delight. Yeah. It really is a delight to know Him and watch what He does and to understand that as much as we have felt we've pursued Him, that we've already been apprehended mm. by the oh, one who absolutely. loves us. Sure. So you start out as Baptist pastor, in a Baptist church, were you even filled with the Holy Spirit back then? In terms yeah. Of, oh, so you had that. That was my problem. That was your problem. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're, you're baptized in the Holy Spirit in a Baptist church. 
And all of a sudden, God begins to to start to show you things that that gave you these keys. Now, how long have you been in this in this ministry itself? In this ministry, we probably really began this journey in about 2002, so about 12 years. Okay, all right. And and it's been really a journey of God revealing and showing us and the Holy Spirit actually coming in and truly mm -hmm. teaching us because the first five years I was not allowed to read anyone else's material. Oh, okay. So he said, I want you to know mm -hmm. that whatever's being done is being done through the power of the Holy Spirit and that mm -hmm. we're not looking for the forms of man. Sure. We're not trying to take their tools yeah. and use them in a way that God may want to give us our own tools. Mm -hmm. wow. And so we, while we appreciate all the tools that are out there because there's many and there's very gifted people who are trained yeah. to handle certain tools, but the Lord said, I want to teach you okay. how to approach this ministry because my understanding was after years of this is that every time we minister to an individual, we minister to a child that belongs to the Most High God. Mm, wow. And every time we touch that child, we are touching mm, Jesus. We're right. touching the Father. And so he said, in the same way that you touch me, mm. you're touching them. The same way you touch them, you're touching me. Mm. And at actually one point of the ministry, the Lord allowed me to see that I was even reaching into his body and touching a place in him that was suffering because mm. of this individual. Right. And when the issue was removed, the Lord smiled and the person did too. Yeah. He said, because I am with you in your suffering and your grief, but I'm also with you when you rejoice. Wow. So we understand that we we really are the body of Christ. And right. when one part suffers, we all suffer. Yeah. And learning how to identify that through the body of Christ instead of just going into the church, wondering why I feel the way I feel, mm -hmm. not realizing you may be discerning somebody else in, in the church that's having this horrendous moment, a headache, a pain, a struggle, you know, mm -hmm. mourning, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is saying to us, don't you discern, don't you see, don't you feel what somebody else is going through right. instead of us always thinking it's about me. Yeah. We realize it's about everybody because all of us make him. Yeah. And so that's the that's, that's the great. idea of it. So what would you say are, are, are some of the more, uh, give me an example, I guess each of you, of what you'd consider to be your most amazing encounter with God in this journey that you've had as you've been ministering to people. What, what was that one encounter that just rocked you uh, as you were uh, ministering to folks and I know I just sprung this question on you so <laughs> it's like how well, do you so picture many. I know how do you picture I mean, one right I know really I mean he's so amazing and just because we're all so unique and individual sure and he does unique and individual things to for our purpose right. and I, I don't even know I mean what would be I'll just pick one well we've seen <clears throat> we had a woman come to us one time for ministry and uh, this has been a few years back and she was sitting there, and as we were ministering, uh, Spirit of Wisdom came, and I just said, okay, I command the spirit uh, that's in the lungs, the spirit of emphysema, I command right. you to leave and go to the feet of Jesus. Do not return to her again. Wow. And did not know until later on that day, she sent us an email and said that she had actually been coughing up blood and was going to have to go to the doctor. Wow. And, but that the thing is, that was not even the the bulk of the ministry that was sure. kind of an aside it, he just kind of threw that in <laughs> extra no and she, she noted that <laughs> yeah. and when she emailed us back and she said it was just kind of a an offhand remark that he made and she said and my children and husband had been watching me suffer wow. and i was healed and we see a lot of physical healings that yeah. you know sometimes we hear a year or two later you know what god has done through yeah. you know us being there working with him and mm -hmm. um and sometimes we hear right away, but you know, the whole thing is, you know, we always talk about, we look for the fruit, you yeah, know, sure. well, the fruit is to me in a session like that is knowing that we've, you know, been able to place somebody's hand in his hand mm -hmm. right. and him to actually, them to feel his presence. And then he does the work It's you know, we always tell people, you know, he is so faithful to yeah. complete what he begins in oh, every absolutely. one of us. He is so faithful yeah, and, yeah. and it's so hard to, you know, pinpoint one thing because we've seen people, you know, just come in and uh, I mean, we've got one friend here who um, I was just looking at her notes the, this week and I thought this lady is not the same person who came to us just a year ago. Wow. 
she is now, you know, when she came to us, she was very broken, very mm -hmm. broken, and she knew it, yeah. and wasn't even sure anyone could help her. Mm -hmm. And and when I saw her this week, I thought, this is not the same woman. This is a totally transformed woman who is walking in the gifts that God has placed inside of her, and she is fully embracing wow. who He created her to be. And there's there's nothing greater, mm -hmm. and we cannot we can't take credit for that, but yeah. we do get to witness it. Absolutely, we get to see it, and that's mm -hmm. what we're thankful for is that we get to watch yeah. what He's doing. That's so cool. I know that that mm -hmm. having you know been with you guys enough now over the years that. The, the ministry of angels is really prominent mm -hmm. with you guys. Mm -hmm. So give me an example of how you are, you know, working in cooperation with the angelic in, in your ministry. Well, you know, the Lord said in uh, John chapter 1, uh, verse 51, I believe it is, where, uh, no, it's not First John. What, did you, what chapter? Anyway, in John, where he told Nathaniel, he said, mm -hmm. you know, but you're amazed. You call me the Messiah because I saw you sitting under a fig tree. He said, what are you going to do when you see the angels of God ascending and descending mm -hmm. on the Son of Man? And we realize that there are many prayers that have been offered up to God right. for healing, for deliverance, for freedom, for mm -hmm. all types of things. But I think what has happened over a period of time is, you know, centuries ago or whatever, we were so trained not to engage mm. with the kingdom of God that they come with these gifts from the Lord. Right. And because they're not, uh, we don't fellowship with them. We don't engage with them. And they don't, you know, we don't acknowledge they have something. Mm. And as we acknowledge it, they come into the presence. We had... Uh, we were doing a seminar uh, in, an, in another location of New Jersey a few years back, and we had a, a woman who came forward when, when we saw uh, the Spirit of the Lord come upon into the room there, and it was a ladder that appeared. Well, we knew that the Lord was ready to answer some prayers, and Robin saw that, so we just told people to come up and stand where the ladder was. Mm -hmm. And even though it wasn't a physical ladder, it was a ladder. But uh, this woman comes up, and she had been having some real difficulties in her body. Uh, she had had some deterioration of vertebrae and so forth in her body. And when she came uh, to the place and stood in the place, she kind of looked at us and she said, I feel like I'm being stretched. Like hmm. something has a hold of the top of my head and my feet and I'm being stretched. Well, later she went back to her doctor. They did an x-ray and all the bones that were basically deteriorated were now brand new. <laughs> and it's not anything we did. Sure. We just created a realm for yeah. God to come in right. and do and, and basically said to the people, expect the presence of God because yeah. he always shows up. Yes. Yeah. Because we, we, we tell people when we do ministry, if the Holy Spirit doesn't show up, the ministry is over because we can't do anything. Exactly. You know, and he on. says, the Lord says, you cannot do anything without me. Mm. And the truth of it is we don't want to. No. <laughs> it's but no with fun. him, all things are possible. Yes. And that's, that's, yeah. the, that's the key thing is mm. that with him, all things are possible. And yeah. so, you know, in the meetings that we do, we often witness the angelics mm. and presence and, uh, you know, different things and uh, and see the fruit of what they're there to do. They're Absolutely. there to bring a message. They're there to bring healing, you yeah. know, whatever God sends them to do. And we always want, you know, to welcome that realm to be open. So whatever God wants to do. Yeah. The two things when he was talking, the two things I was thinking about, though, that I feel like the purpose we one of two of the most important purposes we serve are, I think I've come to the realization that God has called the two of us, not just us, but us specifically, sure. um, to create a safe place for mm. people. So whether it's a meeting or whether it's a one-on-one -on -one ministry session, right. the thing we hear over and over is that people feel like we are a safe place. Right. And that's that's a great honor to us. Um, mm. The other thing is I feel like the Lord has always said, no matter what we were doing, whether it's a meeting or uh, personal ministry sessions, he said, if you will just prepare a place that is comfortable for me, I'll come yeah. and do what I want to do. That's awesome. And that's always been our heart, you know, whether it's a home meeting or a church, whatever. Yeah. Lord, we just want to make a place that, that's comfortable for you so you can come and, and be God, be that's who good. you are. That's good. So, so in, in okay. this realm of freedom ministry, um, which, you know, traditionally has been label deliverance, you know, and many of us have had experience with deliverance ministry throughout the years. Um, how would you describe 
your what God's given you to do and in, in, in distinction with that that classical deliverance paradigm that we've many of us have grown up with what makes you different in what you guys do well <clears throat> well since Roger I want to say since he first got saved really yeah uh, he was flowing in the river before we even knew there was a river. You know what I mean? We didn't know there was a river of God like that you could flow in literally. That's good. And he began to hear God and see and begin to prophesy over people. And we really didn't know. We were just being obedient. Whatever he said, we said or did, you yeah. know. And so, um, and it's through that, you know, it's like we agree that, uh, you know, many people can prophesy, but what we felt called to was to be able to say, to see and say why you can't achieve that, why you can't get to that prophetic word. What is the problem? What is the hindrance? Right. And um, so and so we began to feel like that was the passion that God had called us to help me see why I can't achieve what I know I'm supposed to be doing. Right. And so he's really very prophetic and very good at that. And uh um, and we both are somewhat, you know, um, and, uh, but the thing is, is that God is a relational God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the previous, not to take anything away from the past methods and, you know, whatever forms of deliverance or what have you, but he just didn't lead us that way. You know, he didn't lead us that way. He led us to be loving and kind and gentle and relational and and so that people can walk in the reality of what he's doing in their lives versus power encounters. Mm -hmm. And we totally believe in power, the power of God. Now, we love the power of God, but not so much in that way where people have in the past, you know, come with, you know, had the power encounter with ungodly things in a person's life because, that can scare and intimidate a lot of people, and God's not about that. He's trying to draw us to Him, sure. not push us away. Mm -hmm. And so He just kind of led us to be more gentle mm -hmm. and uh, to represent His heart as you know best we could. Mm -hmm. um, and it just didn't involve that for us. Right. You know, it just we feel like it took us a different way. Right. Um, and and I think it's been good. I mean, it's been good that uh, He's taught us that way, uh, so that people don't feel intimidated or you know, scared sure. at all yeah. because he doesn't want us to be afraid of him. He wants us to draw near. Absolutely. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things that the Lord taught us about this, he said, he said, deliverance, he said, is a very beautiful thing because he came to deliver us yeah. from the enemy and to, to deliver us into the arms of God. But somewhere along the way, we have taken on this belief that we had to go in and do extreme battle for these people. Right. Like we were going against the enemy rather than coming in the authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, picking this child up and looking at the enemy and saying, this belongs to God. And you pick them up, you turn around, you take and get them out of the mud, clean them off, all the shame, all the guilt, lovingly carry them and put them in the arms of the Father. Mm. And let God show them that he's always been there and they need to know a lot of times we don't know how much God loves us because we feel that God is so far removed from us right. that we feel everything that we do in life is going to be difficult. Hmm. But Christ says he did it all. He he won the battle, hmm. you know, and so the Lord says, I want you to approach it. I want you to approach it as though I've already won the victory. These people who have asked me to save them have given me authority to send my children, their elder brothers, sisters, whatever, into the enemy's camp, wherever they are, whatever prison, whatever place they are, to pick them up, to take them into their arms, to turn around and walk them back out, and to bring them back into a quiet and safe place of the Lord. And for the first few years, I actually <clears throat> saw the Lord allowed me to see what it was like to go into those places and bring those people out of those places in the spirit. And then one day the Lord says, now, I want you to make sure that the entire, the entire encounter is between them and, and him, between okay. them and the Lord. Okay. So they see him rescuing. They see salvation. They mm -hmm. see the deliverance. They see him delivering them from bad into good wow. because there's deliverance. You know, if you take them, mm -hmm. you, you remove something, you've got to replace it. Absolutely. And it has to do with the healing virtues of the Lord, the father, mm -hmm. affirmation, mm -hmm. nurturing. I mean, he is all about for being all. Yeah. And we have to allow him to be that. So, yeah. and what I love about, you know, how you guys operate is, 
you know, having myself been in, in deliverance ministry in years past, you know, we always seem to approach it from the standpoint of that we've got to, you know, gain victory for this over this situation and we've got to do all these things, you know, and, and, you know, including bringing in the garbage pails and <laughs> you know, all that sort of stuff. You know, as I said to you earlier, you know, that our authority is measured by our volume. You know, we, <laughs> we, we had all these ideas, you know, what it looked like when in fact, as you said, we should be operating from victory, not trying to get to it. Right. And I think that one shift, which many of us have walked in now for a number of years, has just been so freeing for us in how we approach life. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not trying, because I mean, listen, I've been among Christians for years, and some just never come out of their warfare stance. Right. That's right. I'm like, Wait a minute. Warfare is going to be necessary because we live in a world that requires it, but you shouldn't be in warfare all the time. You should not be, you know, and people say, oh, well, you know, the devil never rests. It's like, well, yeah, but God gives me rest on all sides if I'm walking. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. <laughs> and if there is any battle, it's because he's trying to teach us yeah. that we have the authority to overcome it. So faith is added through each test that we come into because God always wants to prove himself as being faithful. Yes. That yes. he's not like our dads. And that doesn't mean... Anybody's dad's bad, mm -hmm. but sometimes we have to move dad out of the way so we can see our true heavenly father, right. that he's not sitting up there yeah. counting all the wrongs. He's sitting up there wondering if we'll ever figure out who we really are as being his children. Yeah, and he right. wants that. That's right. He wants that revelation because then we relate to him the way he wants us that's to exactly relate right. to him. That's exactly and that's, right. what, that's a revelation that I think a lot of us you know, need is just this idea that God actually has a preference concerning how we relate to him. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and it's not what we think. That's right. Exactly. It's like, exactly. be my kid. Right. You know, enjoy my presence. Mm -hmm. So if you had just one thing that you wanted to leave with folks watching this video that, you know, might be a, just a nugget of wisdom uh, to help them in their journey, what would that be? I would say that God wants his children to know that he hears them. He's heard every prayer that they've ever prayed, wow. every request, every mm -hmm. tear, mm -hmm. everything that's happened. And he wants he wants them to know that he cares. Yeah. And he, he told me years ago when he sent us out, he said, I'm tired of my children praying to me like I won't answer. Mm -hmm. He said, wow. I'm tired of them thinking I'm not going to do anything mm -hmm. for them. Wow. He said, so I'm sending you so that they will know that I do hear and I do answer prayers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when when the Lord told us to go, I told the Lord, I said, I will not go if if I have to hope that something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I have to know yeah. that something is going to happen. I said, I can't pray for people anymore hoping that something is going to happen. So I said, I can't do that anymore. I have to go with the knowing, the faith of knowing that that once I pray, once we've confessed, once we've given these issues to Christ, once they've been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, then we've confessed, we've repented, and then he is faithful and just to forgive, to remove it from us, and to cleanse us, which means to deliver us from the things that make us feel so dirty yeah. and bring us into the righteousness of Christ yeah. by him placing upon it. He does it. We don't have to. Yeah. He does it. Sure. And he's taught us. He said, I want them to know. You tell them. Mm -hmm. He said, in the same way that I went through the spiritual dimensions for three days, mm -hmm. wow. that they will travel with me for three days. And on the third day, they come out of the grave and they begin to have their life mm -hmm. that they didn't think they would have until the rapture. Wow. He said, I'm rapturing you now because I am the God. Ooh. I am the God that raiseth thee. I'm the God that healeth thee. Yeah. I'm the God that does it. So I think that's the biggest message that nice. that we try to give to people. Mm. Well, I would say, too, for me, we talked about this earlier, and it goes back to the authority. Yeah. You know, that what, what do you do with that authority? The, if you know who you are, mm -hmm. then you don't have to have these power encounters because you can just speak a word because you know. Right. You know, you're representing the living word. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess my thing would be is that, you know, if we ever can begin to fully embrace who we are, then, you know, the, it's over. 
it's over. There isn't any warfare because yeah. then we walk and live and speak with the authority of being the sons and daughters of the Most High God and, you know, and, and being able to release everything he's placed inside of us that is not only good for us, it's good for the rest of the body. It completes the body. Absolutely. And so as we begin to embrace everything that we know he's called us to be and do and walk out, then we're kind of too busy doing that to do a lot of warfare. That is our warfare. Right. It's being who he created us to be. Absolutely. And that's, that's the authority we have in knowing who we are, yeah. that we can speak a word. And freedom comes. Yeah. You know, we can speak a word and healing is there. Yeah. You know, we can speak a word and the things that we need manifest because we know who we are. Yeah. And, and, you know, if we can do that, and that really is, I think, I think it's the biggest area where our, if we have an enemy, that is our enemy is not knowing who we are and not mm. uh, fully walking in that. And I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm confessing that right now. And I'm, I'm still coming to that. Yeah. But when I look across the things that we've seen over the years, that's been the biggest hindrance in the body, I think, is just not embracing yeah. who we are. I agree. I mean, we talk about how the one thing that positions us is what are we in agreement with? Mm hmm. We either agree with something the enemy mm -hmm. believes and says, or we agree with what Papa says mm -hmm. about us. That's and that's right. that's the that's renewing right. of the mind, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's awesome. Walking, it's walking with a different countenance. Yeah, wonderful. Well, it's been great to spend these few moments with you guys. And uh, they folks can contact you uh, through your website. So we're going to have your website information up on the screen uh, for folks to uh, contact you either by phone or email. Uh, they travel to different areas around the country, so you'll be able to hopefully catch up with them either when they're up here in New Jersey or other places. And you guys also do Skype sessions, yeah. so, you know, work in the technology. And uh, we're uh, it's just so grateful to be part of what, uh, what God's doing through their ministry here. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you again next time.